quick note. After I originally recorded these videos on Chronometer, the look of the web browser and the mobile app have changed. So things might look a little different now. Um, I will put a little bit of uh, updated information in here and there as to what it looks like right now, but no promises that it's going to stay the same in the future. The functionality should still stay the same though. So uh, here we go. Hi everybody. Uh, this video is going to show you how to adjust your nutrient targets and um, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just go with the defaults that Konometer has um, and for the most part I do too, uh, but there are some things I change and I will show you what I change and you can decide uh, how you want to change things. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit different now. Uh, the, you're in your dashboard instead, and uh, the navigation is across the side on the left, down the side, instead of being across the top horizontally. But uh, across the top horizontally, you can see that there is this other bar here that's kind of like what the mobile app has, and that lets you do quick ads. But we're not gonna do that right now. What we're doing is we're gonna be going into the settings over here, so we need to expand this little uh, arrow down. Let me get rid of my little drawing thing there so I can expand it. And today we are going into the profile and targets. So that looks like this now, which is very similar to the other one. So we're going to join that now. So what it has here um, are things that based on things that you filled in with your profile, um, it has an estimated value for body fat, which I think is probably off for me, but who knows. Anyway, if you know your actual body fat level, you can click update. And um, then I'm going to scroll down and <clears throat> I just kind of left some of these default things. Uh, you can switch those anyway, but what we're really going towards are these macronutrient targets that are right here. Let's do those first. So macronutrient targets. Okay, so um, I I've actually already changed these. So let me change them back to the defaults on that. And now you can see it defaults to um, protein and carbs and fat uh, by calorie, which was what um, if you're doing 80-10-10 you want to do. Um, and it's got a ratio of 25, 45, 30 of protein, carbs, and fat calories. Um, so with 80, 10, 10, we want to shoot for 10% protein. So change that. 10% protein and 80% um, carbs and 10% fat. And so that adds up to 100%. Um, if you did, like, um, where you were trying to track your grams of protein, for instance, because grams of protein, a lot of um, theories will say that you want to have like 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Um, and you want to be on the higher end as you age because it. Uh, the, some of the evidence is showing that uh, as you age, you don't utilize it quite as well. Um, so you could switch it to grams and put in that amount of protein that's calculated, but I don't tend to do it that way. What I do is I do the 80-10-10 thing, and then I have calculated out how many grams of protein for my, um, my weight that... Um, I would want to have, which um, I'm 105, 
uh, pounds and that turns out to be about 47 to 48 kilograms so I would want to have 56 grams to 77 grams of protein daily if I wanted to have that proportion. So what I do is I just kind of look at my total protein um, in the stats and see if it's within that whenever I feel like I need to check, but it's usually been fine. You find the grams of protein in the diary of both the web app and the mobile app. In this web app, the macronutrient targets are found here. In the mobile app, you'll be starting off in the energy summary at the top, and you'll just swipe to the left, and you'll get to the macronutrient targets area. The protein, carbs, and fat in the macronutrient target area are in grams. So this is where you will be able to read how many grams you have had of protein. And let me clear this stuff out. These different bars here will be color coded in terms of red, yellow, and green um, as to how close you are to the target that you set. Now, I set my targets to a percent of calories consumed for the macronutrient targets. And so the bars are going to show how close I have come to that goal, even though they're listed as grams over here. If you want to be able to see what your percents are, you'll want to look in the energy summary area. And um, so that's right here, <laughs> in, obviously, in the web app. But then in the mobile app, it's going to be the first thing that shows up in your diary at the top. If you've already swiped over here, then you're going to want to swipe back to this one. Um, the consumed area right here, that's going to tell you how many calories you've consumed in the middle. And then it's going to have different pie chart areas, kind of like we have over here in this calories burned division and it's going to be divided up by uh, the protein, carbs, and fat. If I get rid of this uh, drawing thing, I hover over it in the web app, you can see that protein is going to be um, kind of a lime green, and carbs are going to be a bright blue, and fat is going to be red when it is divided up and it's always going to be the same color it's not going to change like over in the macronutrient targets where it's going to be <clears throat> green yellow or red in the mobile app to get to this division you can just click in the center here where i've got this pointer um and it'll bring that up as a little pop-up back to the original recording going down further we are going to do these nutrient targets down here. So we want to do this area. And so I'm using all the defaults except um, for that macronutrient thing I have right there. And then also I'm changing, I don't actually change anything in this, this area. So vitamins are the first one that I am going to actually change. So let's go in there. Vitamin C is the first one I'm going to change and it is set by default to 75 milligrams. This is milligrams. Okay. And um, I'm going to say the upper limit is still the same at 2000 milligrams, but I want to change this daily target which is this column is all daily target okay so I'm going to check off custom over here and then I am going to click in this over here and change that to 750 Okay, now 
um, vitamin K is the next one so that's down here and it has it at 90 and um, this symbol means micrograms the first one is the 12th letter in the, U, uh, the Greek alphabet and it's pronounced mu in classic Greek and me in modern Greek but basically it means micro in Greek in this usage and so that's micrograms micrograms are less than milligrams so just keep that in mind so um, anyway the vitamin K um, I'm gonna keep the unknown upper level <laughs> and I am going to change that so let's go over here and do that click custom and then now I'm gonna go and change this 90 to 1000 oops now I am doing the vitamin K at 1000 because there's some evidence that if you get uh, enough of your vitamin K, uh, K1 from plants, that you can generate your K2 as well. And so 1,000 um, micrograms is a good amount to be getting, uh, as far as I could tell for me. So that's what I put in. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the minerals up here. So we're going to click that, and now uh, we are, I, I'm actually going to keep the, the target calcium, and I am going to change the sodium. So sodium, they have, going to keep the maximum limit, and but they have 1,500 micro I mean, milligrams and I want um, that to be 15 I mean instead of 1500 500 and that is because so I'm gonna do this while I'm talking to you about it that is because I uh, I don't add salt to anything and so my body is more efficient with its salt, um, and with its sodium, and so 500 seems to be kind of the minimum level that I should have. So, and I can get low with sodium in my diet if I'm not careful. So I like to track it. So that's why I have um, done my daily target according to that. So the next thing I am going to change would be the omegas, omegas, and so those are in the lipids. So I'm not changing anything in the carbohydrates, um, but the lipids are the next thing. So we'll go there, and it's the omega, omega three, three, and the omega six that I'm going to change, and. Um, the minimum of those would be um, 2.5 grams for me. And I want to have 2.5 for both because I am shooting, f the ratio is actually more important than the minimum, but still, that's a pretty good minimum, 2.5 grams. So um, the ratio that I am shooting for is a one-to-one -one ratio, but I'm good with having a one-to-four ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. So I'm putting it in as um, well, I'm customizing it. So I'm going to do that. And it actually will let you change these over here if you don't do custom, but it can kind of mess up things in some ways if you don't check the custom. So I check the custom. Um, anyway, so remember to check the custom so to avoid issues. <laughs> okay, so now I've changed both of those, and so now I've got that. And there isn't a way to set 
the ratio to checks in the free account and we're using a free account for this so you, you'd have to do it manually by looking to see if whatever omega-3s you have if you have at least two and a half grams um, then see if you've got um, up to four times that in omega-6 if you're doing the same omega-3 and 6 ratio tracking as I am so four times the two and a half is uh, 10 so that would be kind of like your maximum omega-6 if you were getting 2.5 grams of 3 but if you're getting like three grams of three, then your then your maximum of six would be twelve. So you can't really do it in hard numbers, um, other than the minimum, and then looking at it for the ratio. That hope that makes sense. <laughs> but that's how I calculate those things. Okay, and then um, the next thing is uh, lysine, which is in the proteins. So, going into the proteins and lysine, uh, I, I already did reset the defaults. Okay, so lysine's default is 1.8 grams and there's no maximum set there. And I want to change my lysine to 2.8 grams. Okay, so going in here, doing custom. I think you're getting the picture by now. So we'll do that. And those are all the things that I change. Now, it's not made visible by default. And I would tend to want to make it visible and track it because it is important. Um, the um, the minimum here, I kind of agree with at 150 micrograms, um, but uh, they don't have data of, of how much iodine is in foods uh, very well. And part of that has to do with the soil that it was grown in. And so it's really hard to track through chronometer how much iodine you have. So, um, I'm leaving it not visible because it kind of doesn't help. So you're kind of on your own with figuring out whether you're getting enough iodine or not. <laughs> okay, so those are all of the nutrient targets. Next, we will cover how to highlight which nutrients you're going to see at a quick glance.